Okay, this one's about whether you should put a hard start kit on the modern air conditioner. Most of these come with a run cap, and the run cap also is a start assist to get the compressor running. Uh, if I add a hard start kit, I'm adding a larger size capacitor uh, to give that thing, quote, a kick to get it started. Is that worth it? Is that something that's valuable? Okay, we'll take a look at this air conditioner to start with. This is about 10 years old. Uh, it uses a TXV, a non-bleed TXV, which used to be the reason we put hard starts on, was if we had a non-bleed TXV, the pressures would not equalize in the off cycle. When the thing shut down, the pressures would not equalize. That meant the compressor had to start against a head. Okay? This one does not have a hard start kit, and it has a non-bleed TXV. So why does it have that? Why, why didn't they put a hard start kit on it? Well, it uses a scroll compressor. Now, almost everything out here uses a scroll compressor anymore. Uh, virtually all residential uh, and an awful lot of commercial are using these scrolls. Uh, they've been out a long time. They're working fine. So a scroll is a different design than a piston compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at an air compressor and let's, let's look at what it does and how it works. And maybe we can get an idea of whether this makes any sense. I'll also, uh, I've got a scroll out there that I can kind of do some limited demonstration with. And we'll see if we can figure this out. Now here is a air compressor for a shop. It's not that much different from a compressor used in refrigeration, but this one, this one's for uh, supplying high pressure air to the shop. Now we have about a hundred pounds of pressure in this thing right now. And this is the motor, this is a compressor. Now when this motor goes to start, it has to push against that hundred pounds of pressure that's in the tank. Uh, it takes a lot of torque to get that thing to start. If you'll notice right here on the motor, there are three start capacitors on this. Big, ugly start caps. It takes a bunch of high torque to get this thing to start. This is how piston compressors sometimes were in refrigeration systems. The difference now and that start against that head was the reason for hard starts put into refrigeration compressors. Uh, if you had something like a non-bleed TXV, which essentially meant that the high pressure, that, like you would see here, more or less stays in the system. And when this thing goes to push these pistons up, then it has to work against that head pressure. Uh, if you had a uh, fixed orifice metering device or a bleeding TXV, they would equalize in the off cycle so that the suction pressure and the head pressure would be more or less the same when they started. But if they, you had like a non-bleed TXV or some such thing that kept that pressure up high, you'd need a hard start to make this thing, make the refrigeration compressor start just like you'd need a hard start here because that's what that is. Okay, here we're looking at a scroll compressor. Now this one, this is actually a pretty good size compressor. I think this one was four or five tons. Just an old dusty thing I had floating around here. These two scrolls fit together like that. And what this does when you start it, and the motor shaft is right here and it's on an eccentric, it just starts going like that. And I'm not going to try to explain everything inside the scroll because that's another, another video. When these shut off, there isn't any real pressurized gas in here. Uh, there's no high side uh, 
and low side that are affected. This thing pretty much equalizes right off the bat. And even if it didn't equalize, it would still start quite easily without any start components other than the run cap. Manufacturers, this is a Copeland here, manufacturers generally do not specify hard start kits on their machines. There are cases where they do, and they do supply hard start kits for those applications. But mostly in an air conditioner, if you're you're saying, well, I want my air conditioner to run longer and, you know, start easier and use less power. A start kit is not going to make any difference for that. That's not what it's for. And negative things about start kits, and I'm just using a fan motor here. This is your rotor, and then here's your windings. Now, when this rotor starts to rotate, when you first put power to it, it's kind of like the, the kid in the uh, wagon. He's standing in the back of the wagon, decides to jump out the back of the wagon and falls on his face because the wagon moved. When he pushed off with his feet, the wagon just started rolling off. Okay, that's the same thing that happens in here. When this thing starts to turn this way, the stator wants to turn back this way. It has an equal and opposite reaction backwards. That means these windings are put intention because the mag magnetism is in the windings it's concentrated by the field but it's in the windings and they jerk a little bit if i put a hard start kit in they jerk a lot more it hits them hard because these things they have to start against some some sort of load so it'll start faster it will not remain in start mode for very long it's very short kicks off right away uh, faster than just using the uh, run cap but it hits those windings harder are the windings made to stand that yes they are in this fan motor they aren't but in the compressor they definitely are they're made to withstand that and they will withstand it but it is not as good on the compressor as using just the run cap it's kind of like your car if you come to a stop sign and floorboard the accelerator, that puts a lot more load on the components in the car than if you move off slowly. Uh, and that's probably the closest analogy I can come up with uh, for what happens with the start kit. It hits it hard. And they can, they can hit really hard. Okay, next we're gonna do a couple of tests with this unit. I'm gonna test it with just the capacitor uh, run the run capacitor starting it and with a hard start kit and we will look at the difference and see what we see uh, the claims are less heating of the windings and the compressor because when it starts it starts at locked rotor and then as it starts to rotate the back EMF starts uh, reducing the amp draw but there is supposedly more amp draw for a longer period of time without the start kit. Now, ideally, that the idea there is that the compressor would last longer um, because of less heat buildup. It also uh, is claimed that the compressor is under less load on startup. Now, that one, uh, yeah, that may be a problem, but. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see what happens here. Now we're gonna use a uh, meter that will read peak load, peak amperage. And I have to kind of modify this a little bit. This is a meter that will read the, the peak, but none of these meters are actually really good at this. It takes some real live equipment to do that right. Uh, this will be a comparative analysis only because this is not going to read the maximum amp draw. It's just not accurate enough to do that. But because I can use it as a comparison, uh, it may be useful to us. The first, thing we're, first one we're going to try is with just the run cap as a starting device.
Okay, 49.12. Okay, now we're going to test it with the hard start kit on it. Okay. So you can see there's considerably less amp draw when you have the hard start kit on it. The issue here though is how long did the start circuit operate? Now we know that if we put a start kit on it with a large cap, that's gonna divert a lot of the power to the start winding. It's gonna put more power through the start winding than if it just starts with the run cap. So it's, it's shoving more power to the, uh, the start winding uh, as opposed to putting it to the run winding. So what are the conclusions of this whole thing? It took one third the amp draw for the start with the uh, start cap. With just the run cap, it took uh, more amperage for a longer period of time. Now the time period as best I can come up with was about one tenth of a second for the uh, hard start kit and it was about three tenths of a second for the uh, for the run cap. So it's different. Okay one thing that I should throw in here the hard start obviously hits harder than the end with the with the problems I've talked about with having them hit hard. But it's also increasing it actually about doubles the amp draw through the start winding. I was running around 5 amps through the start winding and with the hard start I was running about 11. It's putting more load on a lighter winding. The start winding is much lighter than the run winding. It's not made to be at full usage for any length of time. It is controlled by the run cap. The run cap limits the uh, amperage that goes through it. But when you use a hard start kit, it just throws a whole bunch of power to it. And that that's what gives it the kick. Would I put a hard start kit in something that didn't need a hard start? You know, it was just a unit that I had that was working fine, doing everything fine. No. I think it's probably easier on the compressor to have that. It's not a soft start. I keep wanting to say it's soft start. It's not a soft start, but it's a it's a run cap start. Uh, another thing was heat buildup. Is it, well, there's so much heat buildup because it takes longer to start. It's three tenths of a second, guys. I did the numbers on that silly thing, and using the capacitor start we used about 150 watts to start the compressor. Uh, that don't mean nothing. It really doesn't mean hardly anything at all. It's not going to build up heat in the winding, and if it is building up heat, it's building up more heat in the winding that's made to handle it, and that's the run winding. So I don't think any of that's true. Uh, if you have compressor problems or something like that, there, you can put hard starts on it all, all day. I've done it many, many times to tell a person I'm going to give you two weeks or two years. And I don't know which one it's going to be. And as soon as I leave the place, you're on your own. Because usually what you're doing when you have a hard starting compressor that has a good run cap, you need to know about that. It has a good run cap. If you have a compressor that won't start sometimes, blows fuses or something like that, it's just getting worn out. You can maybe get it a little longer. I've had them last as long as a couple of years. But to put a hard start kit on a system that's working beautifully, you're not going to, uh, in my opinion, you're not going to get any longer life out of the compressor or anything like that. It is not easier on the compressor. It's either about the same load on the compressor or maybe a little more. Okay, that's it on this one.